All kinds. All kinds of crickets. All kinds of animals coming on the spring. Everyone's alive. Feels like life is out there. It should be the life we should be leaving to be able to listen to all that and enjoy it. But the message of the crickets in the sense of us dealing with what's up against us is not a good message. It simply means that whoever's got the plan that's working against you is going to prevail. And that's a pretty simple concept, but a lot of people don't understand how quite extensive that means, what that means uh, in a more comprehensive way. And it's not something you could just funnel into a, I know that, and, and, and disregard and no longer look at it. You know how many years I've been talking about different different aspects of this uh, problem, all the ways that I've seen it come at us, and as, as, as at us, and the encroachments that are gone, and the needling that goes on, and all the little spots that there were that that, that we are having to deal with, and it's all done by a somehow a, a plan. It's hard, hard, almost inconceivable, to figure out that this could be a concerted plan. But it, in fact, it does work together, and it works through time uh, out of mind almost uh, certainly out of my life beyond me before me you know, everybody who might be listening to me for sure we can go way 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 back and i don't know how that all works but it's still it's still working in the world to bring people down if nothing more it, there's a, a control system in the in the world that no one wants to really look at to finally down it put it down finally and then get on to living um, their life as they would expect it to be as they would probably treat other people and have them treat them and have the system around that uh, that that ma- maintains a, ma- a reminder that that's supposed to be it won't be perfect it won't be utopia but at least we won't have this big thing that uh, people uh, who have really just psychopaths sociopaths lesser amongst us that may at one time have jumped in to serve a, a man and then we find out that well that served man was serving man up man became the ingredient and this is where the problem of the crickets uh, requires, requires our attention to not be. As much as I like crickets, as much as I'm reminded when I run out in the field, I see them running all through the grass all over the place. I don't know if to feel cool about it or feel bad. I realize that that's a, an anomaly uh, reflection. BTWRLM265, for those of you on Passcast, Prodcast, Recast, Blogcast, whatever, we, wherever you find us, uh, me, I guess, and those of us that are I speak with through and BTWRLM265 will get you hopefully with the maybe behind the woodshed or real liberty media it will get you the content links which I really put together for you just to read where I'm coming from I only give you literally the titles most of the time I'll read a little bit today but we, we there's much more of the con- context to get out of the notice that we're given daily that we use to pass around and tell people things but at some point it becomes, you, you, you can't just look at this stuff. You really have to figure out that one thing that really sticks in you bad that you need to fix. And it doesn't matter what it is. I just just get in, I just say get involved. Uh, I wouldn't take what you thought in the past as, as an opinion to work from. I'm finding a lot of people don't have a, a correct orientation as to what they're up against. And notwithstanding my detractors of it all. And no one produces a better answer, uh, so I just kind of go with what I do that works for me, and I let that let you in on that as, uh, in a way. But one of my problems has been not being able to give you everything. How I'm even here, the history, my knowledge, my research, where I've been about researching this, the decisions I've made to know to, to, for the what has guided my path, what to throw down, what not to agree to, what not to accept in as a as an idea. There's maybe more of that going on in all this uh, stuff. Uh, information that you hear out, and the internet became this wonderful conundrum as well. What do you What do you look at? And to me, it's more like, okay, what do you look at and analyze, and then have you focused yourself on something? To at least one portion of your life is working towards something, not not just taking in so much stuff and doing nothing with it. I see so much of that going on. It's a little disheartening. I don't know what more to say about that part. Uh, as I was talking last week, you really have to look at this, not from what your opinion of what I'm saying is, but really settle down and re-look at what I'm saying and re- starting to apply it almost a, a new, a brand new again. And I, and I say the best way to get there for you would be not to worry about what all I know and how I get what I get, 
but to just start on a process, a problem, and work that through. Become more formalized on how you present yourself. Understand you, you know, it can be reduced down. You don't have to. You don't have to be the encyclopedia when you're confronting a problem. Uh, in war, no one's reading dictionaries. I'll tell you that. You're doing what's in you to do, and a lot of times your in, intuition, your gut, literally, is is enough to put you in the right spot. And then there's that that uh, well, I don't even know what to say. It's just this inspiration that comes to you, and way outside of anything that I've ever found. It just comes to you, and it gives you. If you start listening to it, it gives you a better direction. That I can't even talk to. So I say, you won't even know what I'm saying until you get involved with your own thing. You'll start seeing all the things I've been saying for you. You'll you'll have to, but you have to do that work. And it can't be a dismissive uh, angle. You can't just uh, say, oh, I know about that, and that's good enough. All the world's problems are too much. But there's something, just even so small, and it may not even be in the things I talk about. But there's something in the world that you can show an example to make better. And uh, I think that's part of what, what, what we're here on. Otherwise, I don't know what part of the problem is because we're not really nice to ourselves. We, In fact, I think that's part of the Internet coming together the way it is. You can you don't even have to meet anybody, and you can just uh, type your keyboard away and just be insultive as you want or as nice as you need and whatever. And all that communication is just going through these characters on the screen. Uh, that's not, not really healthy either. And, and so that's a little bit of a problem because we can't really... For as wondrous it is, I can talk to you all globally, literally globally. It's fascinating. Every time I say that, it just blows me away. Wherever you is, I am. And uh, there we are. And so, but we're never going to really meet. And all I can do is is pretend I understand who you are through these things that we uh, understand with these electronic devices. This AI will never even, uh, you can call it, you, you can say it might go somewhere, but, but it's not. It's not going to be that connection everywhere, anywhere. And how many of you are that I know that we've communicated over years and we've never met? And even some colleagues that I do uh, in the mining law, in the mining and the laws and the working with working to counter the government, the people inside a government's attack. How many have I worked with extensively that I've never met? Maybe one one time once uh, somewhere, just to know that they're real. It's pretty pretty weird. So. Uh, but also knowing that that limited contact or that non-actual contact is still sufficient to move and convey ideas. And that's what I try to do here behind the woodshed, bringing these ideas on how to approach the things that are against us. We see the, really, it's the war of the world, and we're part of it, and so we can either sit back and agree to it by doing nothing, or we can look at, and the only thing I can do is figure out, We it's only come to me to understand, I can only do what's around me, where I am. I can suggest something out there that someone might be closer to that they can do for themselves, and that's partly what I do here. But I can only do where I am at, about what, where I am and wh- about me and around me, and things that I can apply my talents to, my skills, whatever that is, my insights. And, and so that's what I ask everyone to do. That's about all I can do. And I guess the power, the problem here is the the power of persuading yourself that because you see see a thing, it means that you're, um, or dismiss a thing because you see it, that that's going to be good enough. And I just don't see that being good enough. And I don't have anybody that's discussed how that can be. In a world where you have a bunch of people that are taking you out anywhere, they're all ever, if, you know, apparently greedy for whatever, even whether it's an agenda, a promotion, a thing. You, you just not, we're just not wired quite correct. And, that poses a potential problem. Another thing I notice is lots of people will sit in all their knowledge, not realizing that time out of man has already determined a lot of the things that they think are brand new, you know, utopian ideas. And there's a ba- but there's a basis for it, and that's the thing that I find is much more fascinating to understand is the basis for all these so-called new age ideas, these new ideas that seem to come up and give it. Everyone gives it a title and starts to attach certain things. And in fact, if you were to read enough about about what's gone on in, in, in the interactions of man, however far back you have to go, you'll find that people have interacted with these problems before, and uh, maybe your uh, utopian ideas aren't so grandiose, and they're not going to do anything because you're not implementing them. And, and that's another problem I see. That's why I say it. you just can't even acknowledge that something's there and then turn your back on it. You have to somewhere settle down and say, okay, this is one thing I'm going to focus some attention on. It's a wrong I need to make right. As far as all of you all that are doing that, looking at specific things, uh, and I give and I've communicated with you my best that I can. 
and then we at some point some of you will interact further because you're actually getting on the you're actually getting out on the road and starting to travel uh, down your path you you start to find out how how immense the uh the power is that you have when you start seeing it's out there and how little defense is a a government which appears to be um, all all awesome all powerful is really not the people in the government really don't have that and what you're up against is a bunch of scammers and schemers and ultimately that boils down to a few organizations you know i talked to you about how that all works you can go, you know, international, national, down to local counties, down to cities, down to even people around your neighborhood. There's influencers, and then there's, uh, and there's those people that just want to be left alone that are not, that, that end up really have the insight, but won't, won't step forward. And that's been, I think, our problem as a people, Americans, and I think generally around the world, but Americans would rather just let, let other people's, let other people live their life. And, and the way it's been designed is if when you do that, there's going to be more people getting in your face. Until you have to be the one that just says, get out of my face, and then you look like the brute. And I'm, I'm saying that's starting, that's starting from an, an external, ex, uh, an external invasion with a number of tools that you do, may not even understand. And I see so many people wanting to talk about it, but don't understand the, the foundation of how this all seems to work from underneath it. And I can't say I see it all, but I've told you we've seen it enough that we could sue it to the point when, when the su- the suitors that we brought to bear would not answer because I, well, at least it's only conjecture because they didn't answer, but they didn't want to open that can. They didn't, in this case, it's the, or the box, the Pandora's box of, against themselves. It was better to shut up than to give us the opportunity to tear into it and expose it for the fraud and deception that it all is. And so we can, with that knowledge of me, and you, you all have it, it's just, uh, I don't want to diminish any of that ability for you to see this stuff as well, but we're in a place where we have to document that, make the, as I say, make the record. We, we can see the very same techniques and tools being used just about everywhere. I mean, your intuition's a good one to, to check out, to pull out the liars. And you look around who's operating in government, not all of it, not everybody in government's that bad in some regard, not all of them. Until you start pressing, and then you start finding their metal. You start finding out well, who's their allegiance to, their job, their paycheck, or do, is it to what's right? Will they? Will people accept what I've identified to you as the uh, imposition of a foreign rule that no one challenges, no one, uh, no one asserts, and then goes to the seat of decision of those that are bringing that foreign rule on you? You don't even know how to begin that one. But are you accept, are these people that are running this condition against us, are they accepting a foreign rule and don't know it? That's why I bring up the word about sustainability and all this. Those are all foreign. You don't have to go very far anymore to go find and find the proof. You've heard me talk about it plenty of times. The source of the documents is in the occupier who you may or may not see. And uh, the international law about all that, the fact of that, the fact, if you get rid of all the law, the fact is, you have someone stepping on your neck. You have to figure out a way to, if you can, to get that one to stop stepping on your neck. Otherwise, you got your neck stepped on, and that's your reality. And there's lots of ways for them to do it, whether it's obvious or not to most of everybody. And this is the thing about the problem, uh, about having even a smallest amount of uh, lack of innocence, a very smallest amount of a of even the presumed attachment that someone he even has a say against you. And it's not just to say, oh, you don't have a say, because there's a bigger force behind that that comes when you say that. So you have to be able to address all these things pretty quickly. I give you those tools behind which have, as we move through the discussion. Someone has an, uh, the, the international law for this is if you are oppressed, you have to throw it off. You know, that seems the most to be an impossibility. But what's always interesting is in, in this apparent oppressibility, mu against a, maybe even a whole gang there's something else that rises up that destroys that. You have to be able to identify what that is. And if you don't, then you're going to have that boot on your neck. For as much as you might say you're free from it, you've got the boot on your neck. And they don't care, really. These people that are doing this all to us they don't care. Well, we uh, kind of t- I tell you about the reflection of the boot on the neck. The smallest, uh, it, doesn't take, it doesn't take much uh, to, uh, to have a, a, a big, someone who's big, to be destroyed by someone who's small. If the one who's small knows you better than yourself, you can be bested. A minority can rule you, and this is what we see happening. A minority is really ruling us. It's not, and we allow it. So 
all those that might say that there there's no rulers, I'm, and you can deny it, or you can say that you know there you'll rule yourself. No, you got a boot on your neck. Until you can show me, and I've looked around, I've looked around for lots of things. I don't even have not a boot on my neck. So, and I think I'm probably the most capable that I know about a lot of this stuff and recognizing things and working out, uh, working out uh, problems against it. There's a, uh, there's things bigger than us. And that's another servitude. That's another occupation. And so you, we can say lots of stuff about how we uh, are so noble in our apparent uh, awareness, but when we're allowing a boot on our neck, we're allowing an oppression. We've been against ourselves. And so we're no really no one with an authority. And that, so I don't, like I say, I don't come here to give you a solution. I give here to maybe, you know, condemn you to know that you're not, you're, you're really an accessory to the crime against you. And what are you going to do about that? Sometimes the answer is not so apparent, so easy. But what's interesting is it's not so absolute either. Because in, in the, in the oppression, in the occupation, is the requirement to throw it off, which means that's a possibility. And this is where the tension is. How much will you accept upon yourself that someone else will allow even a little bit of, of encroachment upon you? Just a little bit. And sometimes that looks like it's aggressive to stop that. But when I'm not talking about just being an opinionated one, but someone who looks at it as substantial, a substantial trespass, even the smallest one, as I said last week, you do not, it's not just that you say you're not, you're innocent. There's, pres, there's occupy, occupations and powers that come against you that will determine you different than innocent. And you, as I said last week, you, you have to know, have a word in your mouth about how to throw that down immediately. You can't let yourself into the first opportunity of the other side to do so. It's really the, the key behind all of this. And so when we hear lies, and we don't denounce them as lies, and we don't forcefully make that as a one of our main priorities in everything that we kind of work for is out, outing these lies, we we start to be, we accept them. And the, the lie eventually, as we're told, just a human nature response, becomes a truth. And this is really what the method works on. It makes a, an alternative to your normal li- way of life acceptable. It's the normal deviance we've talked about that the psychologists will tell us, the, the, I've reported on over and over, uh, the normalcy bias is a normalcy deviance. The new normal it is telling you these people are at your in your face. They're not even at your door. They're in your face. They're past your door and in your face. They're in your mind. And we are good at trying to think that we can just dismiss it because we know better. But, but that doesn't that's not the way this works works at all so we don't we don't stop the lie we don't become vocal everywhere vocal about the lie and we continue to accept it we then give up the vocal vocality to what everyone else perceives as the, what we call mainstream media the, the tool of the oppressor and so even if you're not really actively looking for something wrong to make right, the lie alone that you hear it should be wrong enough to make right, that you at least put an effort to overthrow the lie. So we've been looking at this thing. I say the Middle East is a carnival mirror for the United States. Whatever they're going to do in the Middle East, the government, the government of the United States is, do, is not what it will, is doing to you. This is a systemic problem. It's a caucusocracy inside what we thought was government. And, and, and I, I say this and my mind explodes because what was established uh, it, it can be found in Article 6 of the establishment of this thing, whatever title you want to put on it. It can be shown to have reservations in it and a limitation in its authority. I don't think people really appreciate. To me, I look at that and it gives me all the power I need to be able to denounce the whole entire thing without... Uh, with, not to the point of saying it's not a power that can hurt me, but to say it has no actual force and effect. And, and having the the way and the means to make the record to prove that. And what am I talking about here? Well, the reservations are the ongoing reservations that are gone by people in power who know better you better than yourself. The reservation in Article 6, there's two reservations, and one is undeclared. The other one is declared, but it's ongoing. It never got paid off. So how can you be a debtor 
you know, I keep talking about the Fed and all this and that it, it makes a difference. How can you start an establishment, an organization, one, a, a thing with organs, a, something that's a mimic of you, a fractal of you? You have organs. You are an organization. Your organs are, or, are an aggregate. The aggregate of your organs is a corporation, a, a corporal being. What, what do you, why is it so hard to say we're not corporations? In fact, a long time ago we were considered we weren't even looked through unless we were through a, as a corporation. But these are the minds of deceivers. And we've allowed all this stuff, and we've allowed ourselves to get into conversations about proving that uh, without even understanding the basics. It says, well, the only guy that can say, the only one saying that is a deceiver anyway. And I've come up through all this, these decades trying to figure out where the heck America went. I believed it all. I still want to believe some. I'm, I want to believe, folks, but it's just, there's just too many things that showed up at a better reality. And I took that as important to figure out and to do things about. And that's put me at some place, wherever, whatever, however I have. When I tell you stuff, it just comes automatic. I can't even prove uh, what uh, what I know, where I know it from, really, anymore. In fact, I was just looking for a very particular thing that came up. We coming through the discussion of the reservation in Article 6 of the United States Constitution for the United States and has changed uh, to the Constitution of the United States. And you see this reservation in Article 6. That has to do with a, ser- a very particular set of statuses. And if you don't understand those statuses, you won't have a clue what this thing is about. You absolutely do not understand it. And if you don't go to those prior engagements to look at the, 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 the clues in those statuses, you don't have a clue what you're talking about today. You zero. You have zero understanding. And when you do see it, I told you before, looking through another problem, someone's talking about this uh, subject matter. I don't want to say it right now because I don't know. I haven't talked with the uh, my, my friend uh, who's really kind of onto this to, dis- to decide to discuss how much he, he wants to do but uh, or disclose on his broadcast. But uh, the people he's finding talking about his subject matter, they do not know what the subject matter is they're actually talking about and finding in these documents. And it, it, it limits their ability to comprehend the totality, of, if, if it's the totality, I see the, the larger context of what's how going on. And if you don't see that, you will n- have no way to understand how to address it today. And the organizational knowledge that I have from a study, i uh, just tell you about, I can't find the information anymore. I went to go find. It's not on the Internet that I can find it. I see references to uses and utilities of the status. Uh, but nobody sets the far, the hard and li- uh, firm date, uh, the dates that I remember. It's an incorporation into uh, a secular entity, which, for those of you that may have kind of cluing what I'm moving into here or talking about, uh, were, was around 900 A.D. 959, 953, maybe even 1053. It wasn't 1056. That was the uh, than the conquest, so we didn't go quite go there. It was there. It was starting to come into being. This thing, it was already in existence. This entity, uh, which was uh, which was in an, in another jurisdiction, was being adopted by the secular jurisdiction. And you start to make these connections that there's there's really nothing under the sun that's not owned by a, another another entity. Uh, and I'm being really kind of generic here because. I don't want to say these are the answers. These are the instruction. These are the instruction studies that you have to do to build those possibilities and probabilities. But there's reservations in everything, and if people knew to look for those, you start. Remember, I was talking about state savings clauses. Savings clauses perform a st- the requirement in law to save a prior obligation from encroachment, and that's why I found in the mining law was so powerful being a grant. The grantor was a stop by his grant, and if the grantor was the uh, estoppel of all agents prior to that, it stopped. It stopped this thing that I was observing was continuing by reservations. There are no reservations in the grants unless they're expressed. And I found no expression of reservation in these land disposals. And I said, wow, there's a break right there. There's a break in what was reserved as a power, a silent power in this world that you can use. And then I started looking for others, other grants, other absolutely uh, open grants. And so when I look at the world, I look at it through these different statuses and these capacities. That's why I tell you, these, you might want to talk about lots of labels, liberal, uh, Christian, 
Catholic, Jew, whatever. They're irrelevant. They're just a title. They actually could be the status that you want to, that you really should be looking at instead of dismissing. There's a whole giant, almost wonderful study to see, to finally see the truth roll out about how you're being done in, in this status that's right in the reservation of the established the United States. Which is what I talked to you about. I said, there's a limitation. You better understand what that is. And all these people in government come through that limitation. And if you don't start finding their limitations, you don't find, find, find that what it ends up being is an open lie, you will never be able to come, again, uh, come into the idea of an awareness to be able to come against what is really you are an accessory to the crime against you. Yeah, so let's get on to the lie that we were pre- prepared to, uh, was uh, perpetrated on us some more. Back to the Middle East, back to the Carnival Mirror, reflecting on what the government will allow, the United States government allows upon so-called its own people, really just an occupied people that don't even know it. In a bizarre televised event, Netanyahu pushes U.S. toward war with Iran. Folks, women, listen to me, women, your sons and daughters are going to be dead. These people are working to kill your sons and daughters. They're not speaking to you. They want to get your favor. In fact, I was just, I didn't know anything about this Avenger Infinity War thing. It just kind of came out. I didn't even know anything about it. The seeds of the destruction are programmed in this, in this series of uh, Marvel comics. Is, boy, what a genius, uh, uh, a propaganda tool this has been. I didn't realize it even existed. In fact, I didn't even know when I looked into it pretty quickly because so many people were so emotionally destroyed over this last movie uh, that they I didn't even know that Captain, what is it, Marvel? I didn't know Captain Marvel was a woman. I thought a Captain Marvel was a man. Well, I think it was, and then it was changed, and there was a legal reason for all that. The people don't even get into this, but, boy, they sure wrapped their life up into a fiction which is a propaganda tool to disempower you. You, d- you take the hero outside of, put it outside of you, and then it's destroyed, and so are you. And you're so invested, now you're looking for the next out. This is a, I was just, I've been a, just astounded, uh, dis- uh, awed by the response to the tune of a billion dollars in 12 days that people have invested in a fiction. That is a programming tool for women to allow their little ones to go to war. And you better understand what the superhero or origins are all about, too. And you're going to come back to this very same subject matter. I'm kind of astounded. I just think if I get lost and my how, how uh, I don't even know what the words are. I'm just looking at this thing. You're, you're all programmed here, although all the ones that, uh, that you are. And it all has the same origins to do the same thing is really the sad part about this. And we keep letting those people that know us better than ourselves pull our string. They pull our, push our buttons. But in a bizarre televised event, Netanyahu pushes us toward the war with Iran. We, we need some superheroes, folks. Oh, we're going to be destroyed. Anyway, the bizarre performance of conjured memories of former National Security Advisor Colin Powers' infamous weapons of mass destruction speech of 2002 uh, Israeli Prime Minister Israeli Prime Minister ben- Benjamin Netanyahu on Monday theatrically deployed props and PowerPoint slides in an attempt to distort facts and convince his audience of one, the United States President Donald Trump, that the uh, that Iran is failing to comply with the nuclear accord. Uh, I just want to draw. That's only I want to say about this. This is a setup for war. Anybody who looks into this knows about it. We actually have admission from Trump. Uh, this, his, as I said last night in a, I think it was a tweet responding to that agreement, that his disappoint, disagreement with that agreement is only because he's going, he's actually supporting the greater Israel program. That this Netanyahu brings up false information, lies, old information, not even authenticated on, uh, information to present to the world that you know the propaganda tools will set up to get people up to a fever pitch to allow war. And then I was, not, it's not really shocked, but I was shocked to watch these Avenger movie come out like it did. 
Totally surprised to me. I'm so clueless about that. I don't even know. I don't even know. Didn't even know what was going on. Like I said, I didn't even know Captain Marvel was a woman. Uh, that's how close I am to all that stuff. I don't really watch the movies. Maybe I should. I know The Matrix uh, was a big a big influence. I was, uh, f- I say in quotes, forced to go watch it. I was glad I did. That sure was a, an eye opener, a consistent statement of what I could. I saw the world doing. Whoever had that insight, and I don't know if it was the people who made that movie or the original writer, which I think was a woman, and I'd like to talk with her, uh, gave you some, gave you an insight, folks. It's all sitting inside that, not all, but a lot of things that sitting inside that movie uh, that to explain, I say, The Matrix is not a movie. I say, that. how long have I been saying that? This whole thing is a setup. It's a setup to program you. It's a setup to inform you. It's a setup that once you're informed, you, and this is my problem with everyone who just dismisses what the things I say are the condition. When you dismiss it, you can, you succumb to it. When you think you see it, and you say, okay, I see it, so I'm woke, and then you put it aside, you, you have succumbed to that. Because it's not something you can really not respond to, actually. Uh, but here is a show that was put on to beat the drum of war. Uh, as, as I like this article, isn't it, by Jake Johnson, the way he opens that paragraph is really consistent with my thoughts. Maybe that's why I want to read it. Uh, and there's other things to say, and he does. He lays this thing out, everything, and he lays this out like I want you to start laying out your your, prob, your problem, subject matter. You lay out the problem with it, bullet point after bullet point. You don't have to get all wordy to lay out the problem. And you set the foundation for the proofs. It, it doesn't matter what it is. This is big stuff here, but it doesn't matter. I want you to look at the underlying reason why I'm even talking about it. We are being the war. The war of uh, the drums of war are being beaten, like you are, you slaves, and you're not really responding to this kind of thing. There should be a a, a giant outcry about the lie that's bringing people to death. It's the only reason why I even talk about this. Although these people are just, uh, they're criminals. They're, the caucasocracy of the whole over the world, they're criminals. Now, so Netanyahu, uh, in Brit- Israeli, not Israelite, Israeli government. I mean, um, remember I've been doing a couple of words. I, normally I don't touch this subject. It's just, uh, to me, it's just another, another type of thing going on, another part of the dimensional chess that's going on. But remember I went through the word, the quick word to study between the distinction of Jew and distinction of Israeli and Israelite, and we touched on the word modern, which is contemporary, which is the thing that happens now. Did anybody pick up on the little maybe clue that I didn't mention but that was sitting there? When Remember I told you a long time ago, you got to put everything on a, you write for your own subject matter area. Write everything down in a chronological, make the chronological order of what how things happen and look at that very carefully. Be very good at that you are um, accurate on making your, Occurrence. I've told you in fighting a patent issue, uh, my friend and uh, was. I said I want to see the chronology of events. He laid out the chronology of events, and I was able to analyze that and find an anomaly in the events, which caused us to be able to look at a problem, uh, which was the answer. It ends up being the answer. The anomaly became the answer on how we overthrew uh, a, a patent theft, which is like unheard of. The patent attorneys that were were, were kind of. Con- we were talking with the time said that you don't that's not normally done normally you don't overdo these types of patent thefts because it's hard to prove well it was it was setting up a chronology well when you set up the chronology on these things you start to find out major lies major major voids of the logic and if there's logic at all and you need to do this and all of this stuff as well that that's part of the proof and we have this guy coming out uh, to push the the beat the drum of war uh, which means your your sons and daughters are, are going to be the ones on the front end of that stupidity. And the organization that's driving this behind it is the intelligence behind the Israeli. And the word Israeli and the Jew and the Israelite. And did you put together the chronology of the construction of the time when we talked about the word Israeli relative to the modern Jewish state? Did you put it together that around that didn't that state didn't exist until 1949? And so even those that beat the drum today that says it's anti-Semitism to talk about the people that have only existed in the modern term of Semite, if you only looked at that definition, 
did you put it together in your mind that they only existed since 1949? Even Hitler had nothing to do with them. So all these people that throw and want to have you believe that Nazi anti-Semitism and all this, that, that couldn't happen as a term. Couldn't happen. Chronologically, could not happen. And if you're of the prior modern Israel, Israeli, not the Israelite, your semi, your semi dis, the definition doesn't start until about 1949 as this so-called state can't be used against anybody as a club. And if you agree your state only started since 1949, it could not make an historic cl biblical claim to the land. So discussing that is not anti-Semitic either. Has anybody put this chronology? See, this is about the, the, the importance of chronology. Uh, I made the comments about the definitions. I didn't throw in the, the chronology of when that happened. So when you're talking, talking about anti-Semitism relative to the Mwendis definition of, of the people that are existing in the state of Israel, Lee, Israel, you're only speaking since 1949. Everything that happened before it isn't existent there. So if you're not making the claim as the Israelite, well, then it, the, the World War II doesn't apply either because you're a different class of people. You're a whole different def definition. You're an ancient people, and you're not just one, uh, even if we give credit to the Judea um, uh, inhabitants, the, the, the Jews of the Bible. You're, you're in league with a whole other b group of people. And so here's the chronology importance. That, that this is Israeli, Netanyahu, is trying to feed into. And nothing but lies comes from this. Nothing but lies comes out of it. Uh, so what drives this? And I had to look at why, do, why is this going on? Not that I'm going to be doing much behind the woodshed to really analyze it without talking with the people that are doing it. And I understand that the people that uh, there's no, in fact, it, it says it in one of these, these links I have. There's nobody over in, in Israel that's uh, Hebrew-speaking that, because that was all it was based on, was the Hebrew language use, uh, that understands different than, than what this uh, organizational structure does. When you understand, which I don't, the Hebrew, which I don't, uh, but the one who did explains, the use of the words that are being used in Hebrew are explaining something that the people there have no, the people in, in this Israeli condition, this 1949 Semite, I guess that would be how you identify. Are you a pre-1949 Semite or a post-1949 Semite? Because if you're a pre-1949 Semite, you're an, you may be the Israelite. If you're post, you're just an Israeli, and you don't have the rights to say... That, you, that I'm attacking, if I talk against this stuff, prior to you, you don't have the right to attack me. And so chronology becomes important, and we get the definition, and we see it doesn't happen, and we wonder, well, what's your, what's your motive here? Because I don't know, folks. I'm, I'll give you the credit that you're due, but if you're going to lie to me, i gotta, I got to stop it. i got to stop it in the first instance. I go to stormfront.org. I find out now this is like a white supremacist group. To me, I don't know. I just type in a search engine word, and up pops the information I'm looking for. Then I qualify it. Okay? You qualify it. Why do you qualify it? Well, because you don't know what's the truth or not. And you qualify, I can only qualify it to my knowledge base. But it says, by way of deception. I couldn't even get this, this website's link to go through Twitter. They say I was spamming or malicious content or whatever. Anyway, you get the link. I found it. You get the link. You can read up on this right from the lips of an Israeli Mossad agent, it says. And I, I proofed out a little bit. This, this is a guy exists, existed. The motto of Israeli spy agency Mossad, which only means, uh, what, the agency or something like the institution, I think is what it means, is according to recently defected Mossad agent Victor Ostrov Ostrovsky, quote, the motto means, by way of deception thou shalt do war. The motto describes more than the modus operandi of the world's most ruthless and feared organization of professional assassins and espionage agents. It really describes the modus vivendi of the entire race. Remember, the definition of race, Double Days 1974 Dictionary, was the race of lawyers was the example. So race is only an identifiable group. It has nothing to do with skin color necessarily. It's not the end-all, be-all. Your skin color is not necessarily the, 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 the end-all, be-all. And so you've got to be careful on what you focus on. In other words, 
you know, when I was younger and got in the sun a lot, in fact, it got, I got so dark, my, my mother didn't recognize me. She thought I was the neighbor's kid. So, race, color is kind of funky. Uh, it's not stable there. Uh, and it does, it could be a thing you could use, but you gotta be careful how fluid it goes. Well, this so-called race here, or the people that identify through the Mossad's organizational structure and its its motto, by way of deception thou shalt do war, describes exactly what Netanyahu is doing, describes exactly what the United States is buying into, describes exactly what Trump is buying into when he says, oh, the, the nuclear agreement with Iran is, is no, it's a bad deal. That, that's just a feigned cover for doing working with a, war criminals. If we can call them war criminals, because in my mind, they really don't have a state. They really don't have a, na- a nation underneath that status. They're just simply occupying group of people, uh, criminals. Uh, and I'll, I'm open to being proved differently, but there's no proof yet to come. And, the, and even the United, the United Nation who looked at this says they're occupiers. So that's not a good thing. So we have a right out of the word of the, an agent of the Mossad that they work by way of deception. So I went, I went and looked at it a little bit closer, looked around. And this is where I found uh, someone who was speaking uh, th- through uh, the language itself it was instructive. The, and, and so the, the uh, Mossad's uh, motto has changed a couple times. So they're looking for them, you know, they're, they're trying to find a more subtle uh, application now, because they apparently, and you'll find this in the reading, I'll give it to you in the links, they give you they give you uh, uh, the idea that they're, the Mossad's not happy with even the, the, the statements and mottos they make up, they adopt, which they refer to the Bible passages for, which I find fascinating either, but here's a statement it says uh, kind of instructive to me about how this works, because I wouldn't know. I do know something. You need to know the culture and how the culture interprets things. you got to see it from their perspective, not yours, is what I tell you all the time. Don't look at you, what your opinion is of something. Go find out what the ones who you're in the environment you're going to be working with think about it. A native, a Hebrew speaker, as a native Hebrew speaker, this poster says, you get the link later in the broadcaster, I am astounded by the answers, which had all kinds of answers, why this motto would be this way about the words that are being used and whether or not it means uh, deception or strategy. Uh, Every contemporary Israeli will understand the word as scheme or manipulation. The majority of Israelis never gave it a second thought and were never bothered by implication. The Mossad itself was, and that's why it's uh, changed its motto. The current motto is, without deception, a nation falls. It may be argued that the biblical meaning of the word strategy rather than deception, but usage of the word has always changed to a negative connotation as far back as Talmudic as the Talmudic period. And so I'll take it at this on face value at this point. A Hebrew speaker will go through and tell me what the culture understands the word from a far ancient interpretation to say that this guy, Netanyahu, uses deception as the first line of attack. And when you go look at his product, and you know by their deeds, you know them by their deeds, in fact, it works itself out. But I am here to tell you today, folks, you better start making a, a loud noise about the lie and the acceptance of these lie and the government of the United States accepting into the lie, like you've been watching it pour out now. It's not even a question. You don't have to feel bashful about pointing out the lies. In fact, it's a technique. I think I've been using it on the Twitter. You make, I tell you, I don't ask questions. You'll see a question in my Twitter. It's not a question, but it's a question. Anybody can answer it with a better answer, but it's not a question. It's a question to the extent that inside the question I'm laying out the truth. And if it's not the truth, we'll see how many people come later. You can use the same technique. If anybody comes to ask me, I say, I'm just asking a question. What's the answer? Because when we're in these times that you can be, as innocent as you want to be, you can be fingered for the, for the criminal. You are the presumed enemy here to these people. Remember the carnival mirror and the reflection back to the United States. You have to have a way to continue the word in your mouth. You have to work in that battlefield. So when I complain that no one answers me, I don't have it's it's a maybe 
not a hollow complaint because I really would like to know more. I would like to know that I didn't didn't see it this way because because it's a pretty nasty world if you see it the, the way I see it. Notwithstanding my optimism that we can pull through it. But when no one comes to speak, you know, Twitter's like this this void except for a handful of people, which I which I appreciate greatly to send the more message out. There is no reflection, folks, to the truth in the internet. Think about that. You ask a question that's the truth, and there's no response. And when the truth says these people are lying criminal, war criminals, if you can give them the, the status because they me, agree to their estate, they're a warring criminal people. Not all of them, just those that are doing that. That this Netanyahu guy has indeed created lie and obfuscation and, and this misdirection and lie of pretense and lie on, 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 on intent and purpose is the fulfillment of the Mossad's options. What, what, did, what did it say? Notwithstanding what the wiki will tell you now, because they've changed, they keep changed to hide themselves. They're a chameleon. They want to hide. It's another deception. Without deception, a nation falls. Well, that's nice. They're high-sounding to them. Uh, they think they're a nation, but they're not. They've been only called to be a state. You need to understand the distinction in all these statements. And then they're occupiers. They don't even rise up to the level that they're even believing in themselves, which is a, that's okay. You can believe very highly in yourself, and that's a, that's a future positive view, which you can drag yourself into that spot, even if you're not. That's what they're doing. They tell the lie long enough, it'll happen, won't it? And why? Because you're crickets against the truth not being told. The fraud by omission. They talk about Iran breaking the deal on old information, and right there, the big elephant in the room is the fact that Israel has the nuke with, and will not engage this issue on the international level. What, Daimona? Is that what its name? The Nevgay, Nevgay Desert or someplace? That fraud, the silence is a fraud of omission in this whole thing, if you haven't figured it out. Why am I spending so much time? I don't know. I'm discussing this. I don't know, folks. This is just the biggest lie I've seen this week. And I hear hardly, I see some people talking against it, but I don't hear the din. If you wanted to be, let's say, alt-right, have a say. And I don't talk about the white supremacist angle of this. I'm talking about the fact of the fraud of omission. To not, if you're going to be a nation, Israel, you got to be equal in even the liabilities. And where you're not, you're a criminal. Why? Because you've not... See, we're talking trust here, folks. You see, when everyone loses the trust, it's done. That's a Trump's loss. Trust lost the, tr the trust. He's used it. We now see he's feigned cover underneath saying an agreement was no good deal, but in actuality, he says he wants regime change. We just got... If I didn't know it before, I got the word last night or night before. His intention is for regime change. Trump's intention is for regime change. Of course he's going to say the deal's no good. That's a lie. He is a liar now, if we didn't know any more. And so the little parts that may have come out that were okay need to be, uh, are overwhelmed by the lie that's going to bring death and destruction upon not only your sons and daughters, but the families and the lives and culture of other peoples, all because of a presumption of hate in two groups of people, the government of the United States and the government of Israel. I don't know how we can be silent on that. I'm just telling you my point here because I don't know what else to do. I tell what I can. I get five people do tweet treats, and that's the end of the discussion for me. In fact, to go out and around the around where we got all the broadcasts, boy, a minds dot com. Since they've changed their their token thing, I think uh, maybe a lot of the listeners was a, a lie too. Uh, ninety percent of the of the, almost ninety percent of the people that were, uh, well, eighty percent of the people that were were listening before are no longer listening. Consist con co coincident with the uh, the token shift. As I told you, I'm, pre I'm a second-class citizen on mines because I'm not going to. I don't have the means to make a token shift because you need a, a centralizing phone number for their decentralized uh, tokens. How how long ago have I been calling that one out? So they, these these social medias are really just look like fronts all on their own. 
I don't even know what to think about all that. I just post my, my stuff where I can. And so I need help on all that. And thank you again to those folks that are that are thinking about putting us in different places, do put us in different places, or thinking about it. I've got another option coming. I've got to look at maybe another station picking this up. I don't know. We're still working out what 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 the what the company is going to be like. I mean, not the business, but I'm talking about what what's the word? What's the common word going out? And why that's important to me is because when the common word going out is more deception in a different way. Other people look in at that, and it makes this broadcast look not so cool. And I've had to deal with that. So it's it's important. Uh, the the be careful. That's why I say if there's any for me, if there's any copyright, it's only to protect me from you misusing my stuff. Otherwise, let's spread the word, folks. Let's spread the spread the love. It's tough love behind the woodshed. You're certainly not going to agree with it up front, but after a while you learn the principles right, and you just start implementing it as you uh, come out and learn to do. Uh, but, but, but at that time you should have been bringing the youngins of the government, youngins in behind the woodshed, and you'd be teaching them the principle yourself and putting them back in line. And that's where we have the problem. It's We were told right up front it was, a, it was free, you're free to the extent that you're vigilant against oppression, and we haven't been vigilant against oppression and so it's up around our ears now so we got a very serious problem they tell us in the books uh, the in the in the writings and the documents they're coming at us israel uh, all their agents all their people are coming at us in deception uh, last week i went a simple word study to show you they can't be who they are saying they are uh, but if they are who they say they are in one context they don't deserve what they're claiming Wow, I don't know how much simpler I can say it, folks. It's three lines of a fact. I just told you the chronology one today. How can you be uh, the Semite of the modern Semite, whose only connection to that is you speak Hebrew, and claim the rights of a biblical right to land? Impossible. You've destroyed your argument right there, to me at least. I hope the rest of you see it. And how simple that was. Why Why is this even a discussion that we listen to this guy? Do his little theatrics and do his little bombs and lines. Just like Colin Powell led y'all into believing in you. Oh, is it 911? Yeah, folks, it was 911. They said America changed because it was a plan before. The government did that. No one else. It doesn't matter how they did 911. They done it, folks. Let's move on to how, where they're dragging us now. This has been my gripe about all this stuff as well. But we're focusing on, on the wrong thing. I've been attempting, and apparently not many people are interested. Once you hear that there's an actual job you can do to actually do something, but then you find, oh, that's actually going to take some reality work, uh, boop, off you walk, apparently. For the most part, certainly not everybody who's listening to me today or has been for the years. Thank you very much. And some of you are turning it around and looking very analytic. I see you. I see how you how you think now. Pretty. I think it's cool. I really think it's really neat. We're looking at things a whole lot differently than I was hearing back in the nineties. And it's not just a critique, a critical eye, just to be critical, a contrarian. It's really to work out the really working out the problems that we face. We have these deceivers in the world, and people are seeing it. They're making a comment. We need a bigger noise about it. We need we need that that movement needs to be made beyond just a simple little proof. We need to press the proof and then not let anybody. To, well, you, they won't be able to destroy the the fact of the truth. They can just show that they're going to be liars and deceivers on their own. It's pretty simple that way. The latest act in Israel's Iran nuclear disinformation campaign. Someone else sees it. Another article. I, I mean, I, we could talk about all this stuff. I could read it. I think you just need to read how this works. It's right there in front of us, but it's not something just to accept and say, knowingly nodding your head on, I see it, and that's enough. We, we have to build how they're taking uh, us down, how they take, uh, how they psychologically control us, how we don't respond in that because we think our awareness of it is sufficient to stop those that are willing, willing to kill people. Psychopaths, uh, the quality of which I, is beyond me, folks, way beyond, way beyond. And so we hand over our whole work 
uh, our lives to the allowances of the uh, through the government of the United States and the budgeting, the appropriations, and the licensing given to com- commerce uh, through commerce and the cor- corporations all coming together. I mean, it does, it's not a far thought uh, to jump when you hear Clint Richardson's Corporation Nation to understand the fingers, the incestuousness is here, folks. It's not that these com- these companies are working all together at some point. And if you look and extend these um, these interesting connections inside the corporate organizations, you'll see it goes even to the, you can see it right in the Constitution of the United States, Article 6. The reserved authority. Pulling you way on through back. The thread goes way back on through into history. And you're living that existence without a peep, without a tweet, without a, without a, a cricket sound. We give over our authority to these people. We give over uh, license and permit to do things, to control us. Uh, it's all written what they're going to do. And then I hear this story coming out of the same deception, handing a deceiver a way to feed you. Tyson Foods backs Israeli. See, I want to make a big point about this. Israeli is not Israelite. And always look at that. That's your clue and your key to start to look at, hey, these people aren't who they say they are. They're either post-1949 Semites or they're pre-49 Semites. And if they use Israeli, they're in post and they have no rights. Well, they have, the, they have the obligation to prove themselves, I guess, into my mind. And I'm wanting them to do so. I'm not going to take anything from anybody. But they're not going to now tell me, as I see this for myself, if you're hearing me come out to tell you how I think a bit, I'm not going to allow this whole thing, even the charade of, I told you, the lie in the first instance is over. You can't even open your mouth to me now. You're going to bring your proof first. Not not what you claim to be proof, as we see they'll do. No, the real proof. The stuff I can independently substantiate. Tyson Foods has been working now with Israeli lab to start to grow meat in a lab. And they believe they can make this palatable and profitable to you. And all they're going to put in is, is the, the chemical formulations that make so-called meat, the protein, and the fat. You need to understand that's not meat. Now, it'll be defined as meat, but it's not meat. But why would you give it this power? Why would a corporation work with this deceiver to, to feed you? Underneath a program that says that people eating meat will be destroyed because we need to make you vegetarians. And there's a whole reason behind all of that. And that's not even, that's not not, that's not an opinion. That's been written down. Back to the same people, the same thing, the same global structure. Always back to that. Always back to this condition. And a few people pull the strings. Tyson is going to give back an Israeli startup. Why not an American startup? You don't think that the same amino acids could be made somewhere in America? Why not anywhere else anyway? I certainly can't see how Russia would even opt into this, given that they now have outlawed GMO so they can produce so-called organic or something more natural. I wouldn't see how they would opt into this. But, okay, outside of Russia... Anywhere else, folks. Why wouldn't they go to anywhere else? Why is Israel the focus? And once it becomes a focus in a corporate status, don't you see that there's an American interest to protect? Don't you see the fortification of the very thing why Trump wants regime change in Iran? And it's not about that nuclear deal. And then Netanyahu comes up to say that the deal's no good anyway. Are you under, Are you following this deceptive line? We're talking about deceivers. How much longer are we going to listen to this? And I don't mean to say, oh, yeah, I don't listen to it, and I'm going to turn my, I'm going to go chat my keyboard again in my chat room. No, we got to figure, we got to get together, figure stuff, stuff out, how we get the message out better, how we make impression about the message, how we get people to adopt that message. So your food, your meat, so-called, is coming uh, to a store near you in a few years at about $5 a kilo, or, or maybe $10 a kilo, uh, and it'll look good. And it might even taste like steak, but remember, Matrix not a movie. I want to go back in because the take steak, the taste steak, the steak tastes so good. Now you're watching it being made, All right? They're going to get rid of the need of having actual cattle because they don't want you to be eating those things. The animals have more rights than you, 
They want you into centralized food. They want you to give you the blue apron box. They want you on the government cheese. Here it comes, folks. And they handed it to a deceiver. You gotta consider this. How much, how much favor have these people called Israeli, post, post 49 Semites? How much favor do they have that they are gaining the advantage in all important sectors of your life? Can't be a clue that you disregard. And you can't just take that and say that awareness is enough to stop the problem against you or those in your future. And these deceivers don't ma they don't care about making war on you. In fact, what they're doing is a tool are the tools of war. If you go into the laws of war, you notice they're not supposed to really interfere with the civilian population. These stories you hear that do this are interfering with the with the basics of the of the of the civilian population. And there was all these thing these secure these uh, international modernization laws that we heard years ago I was reporting on. There was like a whole bunch of them that came through in our report. I go, all oh, this is the plan, folks. This is all all these different acts fulfill what we know of is sustainable development, fulfill what that Agenda 21, fulfill the standards of the future of an unlimited existence where they will tell you what the standard is, that your human rights are subject to the state. When you go look at the Declaration of Human Rights, go down about two-thirds to 75% down, and you'll read that your rights are subject to the state. You don't have, like I would say, this grant right exclusive against all, all others. No, you're, you've, got, you've got inalienable rights, not unalienable rights. You've got political rights. That's all. That's The United States is a political entity, not a sovereign. It's sovereign in that polit in that commerce uh, commerce status, and they put everything through that. If they don't go through the other uh, door, which is uh, po police power and the concern for everyone, so called, that's just another pretense. National security is like the heap of that one. Department of Defense training. They don't care about you. Here's the proof. These uh, deceivers don't care about you. It's all the military. They just plan for what they need. They don't care about telling you anything because you don't matter. Another proof of that. Department of Defense training exercises terrifies unprepared Totowa, New Jersey residents. War games on na on night of April 16th ultimately proved to be exciting, but locals say they could have uh, used a heads up. You, 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 th you think you citizens could have been using a, a heads up whether or not there were going to be uh, war games in your town? War games, folks. See, you're living in the battlefield of America already. I've been telling you this. They don't care about you. They only care about what they do. They could care less about telling you that they're going to make war games in New Jersey. Well, we talked about the power outage last week. I told you that's going to be more to show you how, how to live in austerity. It's also showing you when they lock the they lock the lights out, lock out the power, how they're going to starve you out. It's a military operation. Why is this even necessary? Why wouldn't they do the decent thing and tell you if they were decent? No, they're a bunch of deceivers. I've been telling you about this is coming. If you think I call you cockroaches is, is insult to you and you go away because of that, or you think it's funny or whatever, and you understand what that means, and then you think uh, you think I was being a little bit harsh, here's the example of what I was telling you. You don't you don't let me call you a cockroach and get you fortified to go work on something to go do and stop this nonsense. You're going to face something worse than whatever I would call you. And now we have the evidence that that's the fact. I think you might have heard this on Freaker's Ball. And, Grimner was reading it, saying, dude, you're reading my news. The notice. It's what I've been saying. He read the story. I really think I'm going to read it myself because I think the, all of it here is important for you to hear. Finally, it's out in the open. What you've never been told is being out in the open. People finally go, oh, this is this even even my jackbooted intentions for the people, to serve the people with my jackboots. It's, it's even insulting that, that police cadets quit, numbers of them, Exposed Department for Training Cops to View Public as Cockroaches They're at War With. Now, I only called you crickets. 
That's only because you're not kind of working to stop this. And they have already been working against you this whole time, as I've been telling you, this military consequence you live under. They have been training their cadets that you are a cockroach. And they have the jack boot. And some people with a morsel of morality in them said that's not good enough. It takes at least four years of college from an enlisted person for an enlisted person in the military to become a military officer, which is quite a contrast from the mere nine months it takes for a police officer to earn the title. But according to a group of ten former Austin Police Department recruits who wanted to become peace officers, just like the military, the Austin PD is training warriors instead of guardians. I'm having a hard time not interjecting on this. I, I'm going to have to not. Inter- You've heard me say all this, folks. This is inside now coming out. This is what they've been doing. I told you they they, they do. Well, I'm going to stop talking. I could we could go. I'll just rehash everything I've told you for a decade that I learned for a decade before that. The former recruits are now blowing the whistle and claiming that the type of mentality they encountered is not what they signed up for and is not representative of the greater Austin community. KVUE writes, and thank you to all my Austin listeners. Appreciate that. All the support out of Texas there. It's kind of like a central hub. I've kind of noticed that. I don't look at it too close, but there's something going on in there. And here's the story that might be the one you need to really look at. Uh, Summer Spisak, a 38-year-old tech employee who participated in nine weeks of the eight-month economy last year, said instructors told her and and other cadets that they would punch them in the face if they said they wanted to, the, to be police officers to help people. Spisak and others are now sounding the alarm to the public, saying police are being trained to view community members as the enemy and not as their fellow citizens. Quote, it's so different from what is portrayed. It's so different from my expectation of the Austin Police Department, Spisak concluded. I can interject a little quickly here. Didn't I tell you? P-A-T-I-R-O-T Act said you were enemy combatants way back when. So they've been training that that, that you have been all this time. But finally, some people come together and say, oh, I I didn't know that. I didn't know I'm not a peace officer anymore. Report goes on to say, KVUE continued by describing another former recruit's observations of the police training currently being implemented at Austin PD. Jonathan Murray, who now works as a, in sales for Dell, said instructor, another surveillance company, works for sales uh, for Dell, said the instructors repeatedly degraded the homeless and prostitutes, referring to them as cockroaches and suggesting they find a transient if they were bored and wanted a felony arrest. Of viewing sex workers as insects and homeless or potential targets for prosecution differs vastly from the generalized public perception of officers as those who are sworn to protect and serve members of the community. Well, that little phrase right there is really loaded too, right? I've told you all about what protect and serve is and who the members of the community actually are. That all comes through looking at the documents and understanding the Libra Code and understanding what happened in Lincoln's time. We don't have to go far as far back as established in the United States. I'm reading on. According to the former recruit, officers of the peace should have a guardian mentality and opposed to the warrior mindset the recruits and graduates are being taught to possess. Both Spisak and Murray joined eight others who voiced their concerns in a letter in two different news agencies, two, two different news agencies. Their objections were met predictably with a denial by the Austin chief of police, Brian Manley, who claims uh, his cadets are trained to be both guardians and warriors. Well, what does that mean? What kind of, I can't help but interject a bit here. What does the conjunctive and mean their officers are when they're con- guardians and warriors? Who are they warring with to be guardian of what? Is the community they belong to that they serve you up into as they protect themselves? That's all out of the Libra Code, if you understand what I just said. I'm just restating it. And remember, we've gone one step beyond that. The United States in the murder memo said, we're not even following the Libra Code. It went, we went 
executive expedience extrajudicial. That tell told me, and I tell you again, that means you have no established government in a triparate system, folks. It's that simple. Part of so be cricket. Continue being cricket. You think I was insulting you, telling you you're a cricket? They're calling you the cockroach. You think it's going to be a? You think that's only a to the sex worker or a transient homeless? So you're not even supposed to be touching the homeless. The homeless are by are technically in law outside their community, aren't they? They're not supposed to reach out into the homelessness, lack of a business personage, and grab you. If we truly knew how this really worked and insisted that that's the way that works, we'd see a whole different thing go on, but we're not. We're allowing them to come in as guardian warriors. There's not a split here. He admits to you they are guarding and warring. Didn't say peace, did he? Part of the motivation, it seems, to train the, the police to be warriors comes from the false perception that they are waging a war, a war raging against law enforcement. There are, I'm pausing for you. This is all the proof. They're stating this as, a, as an observation. This is what that is going on. Why the system is indeed doing what it does indeed. There is absolutely zero statistics to support the claim that there is a war on cops at the work on the streets in America. But see, this is a, someone trying to rationalize an irrational statement that's not based in what the statement was based in. It's based in the fact that it's just a condition. Your oppression and occupation is a condition. There's no rationale that we have to do beyond it. We just have to understand that, and now it, all, it should all come clear. I have nothing else to talk about. Once I know I'm an occupied, uh, we're an occupied people by an occupying force, and they will guard and war against you to maintain that status. There's no rationale I have to worry about it. There's not going to be a proof because it's not the condition that I'm looking to, 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 to define or find or prove out. See, we try to prove the, uh, the inane, the irrelevant. You gotta to get to the first step first and start and stop there if you, if you need to go farther. Well, there are at least 75 officers who are killed by bad guys. Okay, I'm not gonna stop and read that. It's trying to rationalize something that's not relevant. It's, it's a lie they're presenting to you that they're not lying about now. It's right out there. They're gonna be guardians and warring. This has nothing to do with peace anymore, folks. If there was any question, and right in the middle of it in Austin, you're sitting right in the middle of it. And I always wonder why why so much is happening on broadcasting right in the middle of Austin, and we have all these people broadcasting out of Austin. It blows me away. I don't understand that. There's an interesting correlation, and we don't get any answers out of there, it seems. We get a lot of uh, hype, but we don't get any observations uh, on how to, or, or any action, if you will, civic action to stop it. And I've told you how to do it. It's not like it's not out there. How to get this stuff to work better than what you're seeing is exactly what's been going on the entire time. I'm going to stop reading. I was reading. I think I've read enough. Uh, this is, folks, this is comply or die, okay? Uh, of all the things I see, this is comply or die. This is the new, the new normal that everyone just seems to look at, but now we have it. They consider you cockroaches. So think kindly of me to consider you uh, in an action or just merely crickets because i like crickets cockroaches not so much just like them now, what they're told is uh they have the boot of authority and you're the enemy cockroach pretty simple there's the uh, there's the uh, the proof now cato institute wants to come out and make themselves irrelevant by trying to analyze this condition and so they they've come up and found that militarizing police uh, makes them more violent uh yeah but they're not supposed to be militarized, see? The whole point is that they are being militarized. Of course they're going to be more violent, but that's their purpose now. You heard it. You're a cockroach. But Cato Institute won't look at the underlying problem uh, that shows that why they're allowed to do this anymore. I've told you about all this, so I'm just waiting for the right hand, other, other people to see it, I suppose. Let me read the first paragraph, because I found this about it interesting to all you Second Amendment people that are fighting with that. Uh, when Attorney General Jeff Sessions announced yesterday that the Trump administration repeal of Obama-era rule limiting the distribution of certain military equipment, parenthetically, such as tracked vehicles, camouflage uniforms, high-powered rifles, bayonets, and grenade launchers, he dismissed concerns about 
police militarization as superficial. The evidence suggests otherwise. Militarization makes police more violent. Let me go back to that list of, of what they call superficial. What the heck is a bump stock and, and accessories compared to tracked vehicles, bayonets, grenades, camouflage uniform, and high-powered rifles? If those are superficial, what's a bump stock and some accessories on a semi-automatic uh, uh, appliance? Is your problem. Here's a little factoid right in this rule that you, I would use right out of Sessions' mouth to say, well, here it is. They don't consider these bump stocks, any of this stuff, to be anything more than superficial. What's your problem? Notwithstanding, we have the right to it to keep and bear our discrimination. What's your problem? If this is a, if a track vehicle and bayonets and grenades are superficial, what's my, what's my bump stock in my accessories, uh, your problem? Why is it beyond superficial? And we let these little clues go by, and where I say, uh, my view is we're missing it. We're missing a real simple way to jump in these people's face and make a simple line-item discussion uh, on how there's no discussion. It, it, there is no place for them to interject. It's like Netanyahu has no place to even begin to lie, let, let alone go ahead and complete the lie. And now we find it's really a plan. Trump's whole position is to disregard that nuke deal just because he wants regime change. Just like we were told uh, Iran was targeted back after 20, uh, 2000 and, 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 uh, 2001. In 2007, in particular, the, the seven nations. Yes, it's all, on the, it's all right here. He's, not, he's doing the very same thing. They got to him, folks. Whatever you were thinking about it, you got to him. And he's become a liar. And he cavorts with liars. And known liars. In the same method of lying. How long are we going to be crickets to that? Well, we're cockroaches. You're going to be... I've told you how to answer that in Austin, folks. You have to get engaged, and you have to get engaged in a way to understand without telling them they're sitting in the military, because you see they deny it. They admit it, but they, not, not in the words that you might understand. The conjunctive and was the important word there between guardian and warrior. It was the conjunctive and. The second one was the absence of the word peace. Now you can step up and say, okay, well, that's where you are. We're going to make a rule, a law. We're going to make it the policy even. But you can't do that. And it's going to take some of you to do that. It's pretty simple. Activist holds up signs saying police hate free speech, so they arrest him for to prove him right. That's the world you're living in. I just read the headline. I don't need to read anymore. They arrest him for free speech. Well, now they charge him for something else, but it's irrelevant. It'll, 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 it'll be neither here nor there. Dust in the wind, as far as I'm concerned. This is what police do. They're not peace officers. They're making war on you. And you want to stick yourself up in, the, in a place to show them that you're going to be the a red flag and a bull and a child. They're going to prove that they're the bull. I'm not denouncing the guy putting up the sign or doing this to get arrested. If that's a bigger plan to go after them, this may be what you have to do. I don't know that it is, but maybe this is what you have to do. The activists out there start becoming, well, as I say, evolutionarily engage. Figure this out beforehand. Have a better plan than, than taking your, your violation to a, an attorney on top of that because they're going to torn that out, right? Better have some really good attorneys, or lawyers actually, uh, that uh, understand this as well. And you might have a little more distance on that because they want to protect free speech, you know. So you want to see the, the the cops actually working not to be peaceful, but to be warring against you? This is another evidence. I can just look through the news and see the evidence of it. And yet, I also find limitations. And this gets back, very interestingly, back to that Article 6 exception, the reservation power. You, does anybody even know what I'm talking about? In Article 6 of the United States Constitution, where it says, that no, you know, the prior debt engagement uh, shall be law of the land, paraphrased. Do you even understand what that means? Do you even understand what I'm talking about? I'm not so sure that many people do. There's a couple of you that I talk with that, that know, that know to look through that, that bring that up. I know that. But not a lot of people understand it. But here speaks to that. The, for as much as they'll arrest you on something you have the absolute right and free speech to do, they'll arrest you just to make a point because they don't like you because you've been sticking it in their eye and they know it. They don't like it. So they, they make you a ha they ha make a hassle for you because they know they're not liable unless you know how to get that 
Have you made your record for it? So I said, this is a bigger game. If that's what you want to start saying, it's a play. It's a game of war. But you are the, going to be the victim if you play it wrong. Not them, necessarily. Well, never, because you shouldn't be using that kind of uh, violence, right? But you are you find a limit right here, and it's interestingly connected to another thing that this article dismisses unless you know higher law, if you will, if I can say higher, more comprehensive law on a larger scale, and not how you're told, but how those that wield it use it, looking if they say between the lines, Texas. The same place they'll arrest, the same place that uh, they'll arrest you uh, for for saying I got speed, for the same place that considers people cockroaches will not do that if you have if you're an immigrant. Not because of what the people in uh, the MAGA people say about it and why we need the wall, but because of a status. And you're going to find this replicated in your state statutes in a different, slightly different place. You're going to find it underneath your corporation's law, but it's this instance is not because of corporation law. It's reflected like it is, but its actual power actually speaks in through the Article 6 thing. Uh, Roman Catholic parishes in Texas are providing church-issued identification cards to illegal immigrants who, because of their status, are not eligible for ID issued by the state. The title of this, Texas Police Accept ID Cards Issued by the Catholic Church to Illegal Immigrants. And so all of you uh, patriots among you go, oh, those, those nasty immigrants. You don't understand international law. You don't understand international authorities. You have no clue what you're talking about. And when you start to do that, you'll find out that these so-called illegal immigrants are just really the tip of the iceberg of some other bigger problem and why it's even put up here and why you see these anomalies. And you'll focus your attention on something completely different. So the Roman Catholic parishes in Texas are providing church-issued identification. You go through and read this. Uh, and they explain how they did explain what they put on it and everything. And if you do enough research, you're going to find out that every corporation with inside a, a state anymore allows corporations to do certain things. One is to make ID cards. A lot of you already know this. You don't understand the power of it. In this case, we're talking about a church, which the article will say has no more power than a civil corporation who's non-profit. That's not true. They also talk about every one of these churches listed as a 501c3 church for purposes of IRS. Well, that's a misfiled, as far as I can tell, because they're actually a 508, I think it is. And you look at that authority, why is what you're looking at there? Not that they have. That would be a mistake under 501c3. You look at why they have to. The IRS has to recognize that. Now you're going to be on the authority that I'm talking about in the Article uh, 6 uh, reservations. That, that shall be law of the land. Now does it start to make a little more point? They can't not look at this. They can say it's through state statute and the United States, America does not follow the old way of this status, but they can't actually uh, come against it. And we see evidence right here that this uh, civil corporation of the church can issue ID tags, which then the state police have to agree to, are their limit to identify you. Now, if that's the case, why do you need to go to the state ID, which you know is sitting in commerce, completely a commerce jurisdiction? And this is not in a commerce jurisdiction, notwithstanding its filings, is it? As I rec recommended by the Diocese of Dallas, the ID cards include uh, the application, applicant's photo, date of birth, addresses, church logo, and church membership number. And as a recent a weekend, uh, 300 persons received cards at San Juan Diego Parish in Dallas. According to news, uh, Dallas News, approximately 500 applications for IDs were received at a recent parish event. San Diego, a uh, San Juan Diego Parish requires ID applicants uh, who are 18 years or older to first become active church members for at least six months. They must also provide uh, also provided uh, active or expired government issued 
the photo ID for their country of origin and be accompanied by a legal U.S. resident or citizen who can vouch for their identity. Do you even know what you're reading there, folks? That's international law right there. That's not this, the church, the church is not taking anything on. This is a standard thing you do. In fact, there's a treaty that says there are supposed to be no stateless persons. And yet they funnel everybody through a corporation, don't they? Well, this is a very special type of corporation. But it, we're not going to talk about that. And I don't even see that their tax status is right here. But does it matter? You're seeing a truth. The, the cops have a limit, folks. They can only go so far. The state has a limit. It can only go so far. They'll tell you you can't drive with this ID. But it does function as an ID in a state that's corporate. Think about that. And think about what the ID is they're getting from another country. It's all the same jurisdiction, the same one the United States was agreed to by prior engagement to be limited to. And so while this article diminishes the capacity and says it's only strictly related to the state laws, this is speaking to international condition. And I, those of you that freely think about stuff might want to consider what you're hearing here. I'm not, saying to, I'm not suggesting anything. I'm just saying start to consider what you're witnessing in the news, letting us know, why can't you do it? Why are you subject to certain things? Why are you having to do it that way? What is the connection over to this? What did they just do? What jurisdiction are they operating in? Why is it recognized for some purposes? Now, I would tell you you could use this to show at least you don't get arrested. And they would say you have a driver. Well, that's a whole other thing. Uh, isn't that how I've told you? Now you have to concern yourself with whether they've extended a commercial jurisdiction onto a non-commercial use, right? And I told you it's a granted use. There's your exclusiveness again. I've just broken that connection. Becomes if you well, where you can identify it as a grant, which should not be hard for you to do at all. I'm talking a little bit esoteric because there's no silver bullet for any one of you. You have to have a more complete understanding about how this works. But I'm giving you the answers right here as I'm looking through my mind as I'm talking. I'm saying, yeah, here's all, here's all you need to know, actually. How is this the case? What did stop the military? That's international law, too, and outside the Libra Code. And I marvel at how was I even standing before Benedict's on Admiralty that one time when I started reading it. <laughs> I don't know, folks. I just a spirit guided me to be standing there, started reading books. Happened to be that volume right off the bat. I kind of find it kind of interesting. It wasn't our constitution. If I was looking at where did America go, why am I standing on a book of admiralty, looking at an encyclopedia of admiralty, and in there is the international law we're dealing with. May or may not be applicable in the capacity of admiralty, but it's it's dealt with on an international level scale. 1907, Kansas, Colorado says the, right there in the court case that the Supreme Court always acknowledges, uh, recognizes uh, uh, international law. Why is this part right here that I just read you? Why is it referencing essentially what's required under international law for purposes of identity? They didn't reference their, they didn't reference the uh, more than it was their policy, and they didn't reference that they got their authority through the charter. Notwithstanding that the article will tell you, oh, these are diminished capacities. I really don't think so, folks. And so this is a really a much bigger story, I think. In my, well, for to me, it was it was it, it it's the writings on this wall here for you all in this regard. Looking at this story, we're looking at what's deception and what's uh, omissions and what. How do you look through the transparent? At the one hand, you get arrested for putting up a sign. On the other hand, a church gives you a piece of paper and you hand it to it. It's another little bitty sign and they have to recognize it. Do you understand the distinctions going on here? Do you understand one has an authority and one is just being is toyed with? Why? Because you don't live in that land you were told. And there's a way to address it over over some time because there's an education process that you have to undo that look, that you've been now told very particularly to Austin, that you are perceived to be a cockroach. Because you don't understand if you don't want to give up your ID and all that, which you shouldn't. You shouldn't be able to speak with these people. You should have the right from the, from the association, like the Constitution says, which is not working. They deem you to be a transient, don't they? Did you, did you pull this stuff together? It's pretty quick 
to understand what you're up against, folks. It's really not that hard to see they, how they justify their existence in your face. And yet the tools are here for us to see if we were to understand a little bit more than what we found someone saying on the Internet about what they thought is going on. It's a frustration of mine a little bit as I say that. But I just got to be patient and hope you all cut through the nonsense and find, sh- find yourself behind any woodshed that will be giving you the principles that are correct. There's a whole lot more to understand about how a lot this is rece- uh, how this lays out. And when I read this article, I was reading it through the Seeing International Law being speaking right through this. And I told you I connected it right up through the Article, article 6 uh, reservation. Does it go through the reservation? No, it's the same authority, though through a different avenue. Now, so for some of you that are there, maybe you might want to consider how this is working, that it's working. Maybe there's some uh, uh, an ease of access to certain things that are already conditions working in the world. Why would you want to invent the wheel when it's already working in the world to see that it's working in the world, contrary to everybody else's thoughts? I've told you, acknowledge what you see. Don't. It's a power. Don't dismiss it. It's telling you something. It's informing us of something. Whether or not you'll engage it or be affected by it, that's really a different decision, and that comes over through the experience. And when you uh, find your way through this thread, this narrow path of authority, you're going to find out what I... You'll see more of what I've been saying that I really can't explain to people... On one, on two points. One is I can't because you have to see some of the power, the foundational uh, law behind it, the foundational recognition. Like these cops recognize this uh, so-called ID. It's not really an ID, but it's it's an identification for their purpose. You speak to them that through that that they have to recognize, versus something that you just make up in the world and think that's going to be good enough. And this is the subtle distinction I've been talking about all this time. It's just more reference and more notice to us. If you look at it that way, you'll see all. The, it just speaks to me. And I tell you, it speaks to me in a different way. This is how, partly how. It speaks to me in a different way. I'm looking right at the law that they're applying, even though they're denying that there's something outside of state law. Well, I'm reading the state. I'm reading fed, international law, and the, and the State Department has to recognize this as well. And you'll see it in your state law, too, which you have to give up when you get a new one in a new state. It's all the same. Why is it all the same through through international little quest to your local house? Because there's nothing new here. It's all consistent with the well, at least one authority. It's also kind of nice because we can go around and around the world and not be so different. You have to be like we hear is being made to use for oppressing oppressing people. There's really not that big a deal about this if you can just kind of go through and show each other. Uh, that you're okay. I mean, they just don't want any criminal in their pl- in their in their midst. Another deceiver. See, we're not so nice, so they've had to make these rules to keep the cell wall from being penetrated by an adultery. Anyway, so that that story is pretty fascinating to me. Uh, there's international law written all over this one. There's connections right through the authorities. There's a sh- proof in one story that they can beat you down. Another one they'll recognize it. And all the people that are like MAGA or or United U- USA 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 anybody, you don't even recognize what you, what you're arguing about. And you agree to suffer underneath an oppression you don't even recognize. It's transparent to you. It's it's at one level it's a fascination to me. I'm beginning to really wonder as I go through every day, every year here, every month. I mean, it, I'm just wondering. It doesn't have much more meaning to me. I'm hoping at some point it has a whole lot more meaning to a whole lot more people because I think we we do cause that change. But when I see stories like this and no one responds to it, it's like, oh, well, geez. Everyone looks at it like it's this big. Well, they 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 rail against it. How are these immigrants getting these IDs? How wrong is that? You don't have a clue. You don't have a clue. And you're lost. And you'll be lost, and you'll be taking advantage of, and you're taking advantage of yourself because you think you know everything. And I'm not saying I know everything by seeing this, but I say I see a I see a reason. Whether or not I can use it, that might be a different issue, but I can see a reason behind it now, and it certainly backs me off to say all these illegal immigrants are so-called illegal where you didn't understand that the imposition of the ID was a crime. 
are you are you following? I mean, am I speaking too fast again? I think I believe I'm maybe speaking too fast. We've assumed a lack of innocence on ourselves that's not right, and you don't recognize it in other people. You don't recognize it through other jurisdictions, and when you're not thinking that way, you're not seeing anything. You don't understand a thing I'm talking about. You think it's, you listen to me because it's. Oh, well, I don't know why you listen to me actually. Some of you hear some of the truth. Some of you can put it together now that you've been doing the research. So you hear how fascinating this thing might might be. That you just buy into the fact that I'm excited about it, or or I I can speak about it so. I mean, so co- consistently. There, there's some attraction there, but it's beyond that. It, there's a factual reason why I can go through this this quickly, starting with Netanyahu, how they work, how they're lying to you, how they lie to you up front, how you're looking at the lie right in your face, how you can't do what you're told to do, and yet you'll. You rail against people that are actually innocent and just trying to get along and an authority that has the power to do so. It sounds to me at some point, why are you jealous? What? Well, what's the what's the question actually? ID is important. Why? Go look that. Go find out why that's important. How do you establish it? Go find out. This is one way. If corporations have the power to issue IDs and that suffices for the purpose of identity, what's your problem with all this? When you go, and I couldn't find it, but when you find out the legal, the whole system of legal law, it only looks at your corporation. For all of you that rail against the uh, fiction, that's all this is, folks. But there's reasons why. There's tools, it's a tool for purposes that have been beyond us that we know a lot of us didn't research some of us did they start to see a glimpse that because we have a fallen nature this is the best we've come up with and now people have taken advantage of it the caucasocracy those that are now not in peace officers but are warriors learning that you are a cockroach but they can't step on these illegal these so called illegal immigrants with IDs not issued from the state, but accepted. You better get your head wrapped all around that nice and tight to figure out what I've been talking about. Hey, moving on, the ID, how they ID you, uh, what they do with this information is another th- thread. Why they even need it is another issue. Uh, but that they need it is the important part here. And that I told you that they're going to ID you and try to ID you and make technology that IDs you, whether or not it's accurate, but that they're going to do it. They're going to put you in places. If they if you become a target, like I've told you before, you, they're target and you they don't like you, they're going to fabricate you into a place. Where did we learn that? But from the Israeli uh, forensic lab that can put your DNA anywhere. Why them again? But now I told you before, remember I said, they're going to take your voice like I used to do in video and do some techniques, simple techniques in video, to make it look like, uh, as I told you, the 15-minute speech that I used look like when I got done that you made two and a half minutes of. And I was being, I told you, my intention was to correctly paraphrase your 15 minutes into two because that's all I had for TV uh, in an edit. So you got a two and a half minute uh, video and I put words in your mouth in that I put an edit together that you didn't actually say but it was your words. And then I showed you the con- uh, the Kennedy uh, statement where they took parts of his speeches and assembled them in a way that they could take a speech he never stated but was written and put that into a form that you could hear as if he spoke, fabricating reality, constructing a reality. We now have the proof of the fact of the technology. If I didn't understand where it was before, I don't know that they did it with this, but here's where they could do it. Adobe's new Photoshop for Voice app lets you put words in people's mouths is another form of identification. Work this backwards. When they hear you speak, there will be an identity coming, folks. It doesn't mean it's you. It just means that's what the system, the military, is going to be using for you to identify you. Right, wrong, or indifferent, they're always right because they're the power. In fact, I just I think there was a, a news article last night. Facial recognition, I think, in the U.K. was 92% wrong, and they're still going to use it. Oh, they caught a couple criminals, so that justifies it. 
Now, what are, when they go, Adobe's new Photoshop for voice app lets you put words in people's mouth. They can take the, uh, the sound parts of your voice, construct them by, by words you type into a processor, and construct the sound as if it's real. Is what I told you years ago was coming. What could they do with my, my vocab, with all the sound bites they have in this broadcast? They can now have you saying things that you never, ever, ever said. And oh, Adobe's trying to figure out how to put watermarks in f- to make sure that someone who, who's going to make this up, it can be known that it was a f- of construction. You think the NSA is going to care about that watermark? You think they're going to be able to strip that watermark? You think there's any ability to protect against this identification by voice? You know, we we keep thinking we got these things on our these IDs on our hands. I keep telling you it's your phone. I keep telling you it's going to be technology. That the technocrats are beating us. Now they just hear your voice. They construct language. His probably whether they did use Adobe's new approach. Photoshop for voice or not in the Kennedy speech, they still showed you they can take parts, type in words, and get out sounds that sounds really, really close, if not hard to tell. Is the future identification that this thing that we're up against needs, that people need to be able to identify so they can stop it? And if you don't, you're going to be subject to it. I don't know what else to say for all of you all that just want to stop just be living in your nice in your peace within your your realm and within your your domain that's not how this is actually working out I, I don't agree with how it's working out but there's not more that I can do than to tell you I see the some parts of it working this way it works consistently this way it continues to work this way because it works and we need to the only way to stop it is to get involved with uh, stopping it and so one more tool is coming to make it a little bit tougher, a little bit easier to, even if they're not after you to do anything nefarious like uh, silence you and get you in the cage, just to make you sound like an idiot. And how are you going to stop this? I mean, it was bad enough to see your vi- see people's video and they're putting a mouth on your video and you're not saying those words at all. Now they literally have the audio file they could be speaking with it. They don't have to capture it some way. They can take the sound parts and construct it. And I told you this. Is, I was wondering um, back back when we were when I was doing uh, uh, R and D. One of the projects was a speech chip, sound on a chip. This was a this was like an, a marvel at the time. And I've just been wondering why it was taking so much, so long for the software to catch up. They had hardware on a chip that did generic sounds. In other words, if I wanted a Japanese, this is one of the projects, it was a Japanese woman speaking, someone who didn't know the woman but, but heard the voice would think it was an actual Japanese woman speaking. They wouldn't be able to identify them particularly. They would just know it was a, they thought it was a woman, literal, real woman speaking was one of the voice characteristics that were programmed. This was done decades and decades ago. To identify somebody with that voice now has been the the shift. But the hardware ability, the logic hardware ability to make someone sound like they're really real, has been, I've known about it for years. We now have the software to do it, and they did it exactly in software. They just took the sampling parts of the sound that was put in a digital chip, hard-baked in the chip, that was selected uh, to form the speech that was required. It was attached to so-called AI that would interpret a statement so that it would respond to build the phrase by the sound parts. And so here we are, folks. They can now identify you by voice, by the fact of someone creating your voice from the parts they hear. You think that Alexa and Siri and whomever else is listening in your technocratic devices is uh, not collecting these things? I mean, I was talking to someone on the Twitter. The the, the thing I left out was all the practical jokes. I can see what could be done with this, but uh, that's the fun side. This is a serious, serious encroachment on how to so-called ID you, how to create a lie and a deception transparent to everybody but the guys who did it. 
what the Snowden uh, disclosures, if such that they are disclosures, uh, and from Snowden, if not from the NSA itself or the CIA, were to give license now for this to be done without you keep being able to, without you being able to identify who done it. What we saw, found out before with Israel again, the deceivers being able to fabricate. Who comes up with this? They would fabricate DNA anywhere, but they can do it years and years ago. Again, what's a voice? Well, a voice is pretty complicated. So, very, very fascinating technology to come in software now and show you. I can type out, if I have enough phenomes from your voice, I can type out letters on a keyboard, and it will construct those letters, meaning word sounds, to have you sound like you were speaking the sentence I typed. Should well, boggle your mind on the cool side, but boggle your mind on the... On the very concerning side, I don't even know what to put in terror here. I just don't know, folks. This is a pretty serious condition that they can do. And what do they want to do? They want to do it at the speed of light? No, they bring this stuff on the technology. It's about the technocracy. They want to bring this technology on to put them in the power because they need this. They certainly need uh, the info, the intel on you, the intel inside on you is what they use to deceive you. These deceivers, we see them in the news. They're right around us. There's the cockistocracy is all apparent. There's not hard to see. It's how are we going to address it? I think is the, the only remaining factor. Do we address it? And I think we do need to. But will we? And how? There's a certain way to approach that. A couple of ways, but a certain, not a lot of ways, because they have the position of power and they have programmed everybody to agree with them. Is the other thing you have to understand. So they want this stuff coming, and they want to suck all this information. They want all this sound, the, the, your voice, and what you look, all this information at the speed of light. And they want to do it. And the technocrats are promoting this next phase of uh, uh, harm upon us, which is the this 5G network. Uh, and I know Gary L has been a lot hot on this and, and focusing in on this. And this all ties in also to the smart meters, all this radiation stuff. Uh, but the the bottom line about it, it is a hype. It's another deception. It's another war tool as well. When you start looking at this, it's hard to get away from this. Yes, I can discuss it outside of that, but it sure makes a whole lot more sense inside the fact of it being tools against us. This is a, the guardian and warrior condition of the state against you, the cockroach. Uh, but the race to 5G is mindless marketing bovine scat. I'll say, as an article, someone's starting to notice and analyze this. Uh, this whole thing is a, another deception. It's a promotion. And I don't know, I guess the basic bottom line I see about 5G, that when they increase the frequency, that by, by physics requires more line of sight. So they have to put more antennas everywhere because any obstruction now uh, becomes an impediment to the signal. Is why they have to have more of these these frequencies, uh, more towers, transmission points, and higher and power, because they need to go through anything that there is, so it's all connected. This is just a physics thing, but that means you're going to be more radiated. But they're pointing out in this article that this is the mindless marketing uh, uh, BS, bovine scat. It's not what it's just a thing to program you that that is needed, it's such that you might think because they got you to plug in, folks. This is our life now. For several years now, wireless carriers have been using, been busy telling everybody who'd listen, the fifth generation or 5G wireless will be a game-changing broadband revolution. Time and time again, their marketing departments have breathlessly insisted that everything from smart cities to next-gen medical care will only be possible through miracle and of 5G connections. Quote, going from 4G to 5G is like going from black and white to color, recently proclaimed Sprint CEO Marcelo Clower. Clower, while trying to sell the company's recently proposed merger with T-Mobile. Quote, it's a seismic shift, one that only the combined company can unlock nationwide to fuel the next wave of mobile innovation. But while 5G will be a natural evolutionary step for a wireless, it's far from earth rattling societal transformation we're being promised. And that's the point of this article, to point out how the problems, the failures, the hype, the, dis the the frauds of omission, the lying, the deception in this as a communication tool for the getting the intel in your systems out into what they need. And it's not going to actually give you anything much better than you already have. Why? Because the block points are in control of these companies. 
Oh, they, it's like uh, my, my broadcast here. I'm on the edge of uh, getting out. I can, the uplinking that they offer is not near what it should be. I mean, if you were thinking about having uh, nice, clean stuff, I'm really surprised sometimes I get out like I do. If it wasn't for the high speed working right on the top of what I can, uh, I can put out, we probably wouldn't be, uh, you wouldn't be listening to me. Uh, going up to the, the server to drop the file that you listen to on the blogcaster, it only goes up at, at creepy crawly speeds. So uh, we're, listen, we're limited. We're far from what they can actually do. And we heard that in the, in the net neutrality stuff where the, they were showing what they're going to do is they're going to give all this bandwidth uh, to the money, the, 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 to the money, whoever pays for it. And so the rest of us will be on the bottom end, but not with not getting into all that. This technology is being pro, it's a deceptive a deception and a promotion that won't actually meet your needs. It meets their needs. And so, and to me, it's a weapon that they're being used. It could be the it's a cool thing, but it it's a weapon. It's being used against us, and we see the controllers. I, I tell you about being careful about these digital things, these things that are wrapped into digital in the world, like the cryptocurrencies and this and that. If nothing more than from this aspect alone, if it wasn't bad enough they got Intel inside, they could just hack everything you got eventually. They have this other thing that can block you out. And so here's the evidence. While they're talking about all this access, the governments who are inside the incestuousness of the corporation structure, a Britain's Great Firewall blocks access to another official Disney sites, Internet safety guides, VPNs, and coding sites for kids. This is on the heels of what happened in Russia. The governments have just shut these addresses down. Now, when that's shut down, how do you get to your banking? I don't even care about cryptocurrencies. I'm talking, how do you get to your banking? How, well, I don't know about Disney. It sounds like Disney should be a site that's uh, uh, supposed to be blocked. When you look at their content, you look at it with a, take, a tech, take a step back and look at it. It may not be such good content. But notwithstanding that, your VPNs are being, all these address blocks are being blocked out by governments as they try to get a handle to protect the children. Save the children. Uh, save the feminist women. We got to, you know, the promotion of rape, which doesn't actually protect, promote womanhood and doesn't protect them either. These are all just covers. Like I said, these are the stocking horses that we buy into. But governments can shut out uh, big blocks uh, of the internet. Are you going to? Ex- are you going to be putting all your eggs in that basket is something that you really got to consider uh, when you look around the world of what's going on when it's actually a weapon against us. And they're pointing all this out now. I'm just pointing it out. Uh, hopefully someone will listen and will look at alternatives. Is all. I'm not looking at all. You can't do that. Look for the alternatives. There's going to be ways to do it. And I think uh, coming up here uh, there's another little story about how that is. Telegram gets blocked in Iran. One program, they start blocking out IB, uh, Russia did it, now Iran's doing it. Um, Iran, I should say, those of you that maybe go there. Uh, Telegram is a program, they're blocking access to this. The point is the governments are stepping in to block whatever they feel they need to, which seems to undermine, undermine whatever they've decided, but in fact they start blocking out entire accesses. Uh, then the company, the corporations get involved. They don't, they're ostensibly saying, I don't want to be looked at as a co-conspirator, like the accessory against everybody. Like I tell you, the accessory in your nose when, uh, the ring in your nose when you don't fight this, uh, is they are, they know exactly what this means. Amazon orders Signal to stop using AWS to defeat censorship. Amazon doesn't want you to be censored, to, to, to stop censorship uh, by these governments. Or a corp, or anybody, uh, Facebook, all these other, they don't want to be associated with getting, uh, setting themselves up as a service that provides an, a conduit for a company, an app provider, uh, to go around censorship. Start putting these things on, you want to talk about a blockchain on a ledger? Make the database and put all these companies that start protecting government uh, and other censorship and protecting that, the, the fact of that, put them on the same side of the ledger as, as, as if I could say, the enemy. It's not just an open thing, I guess, is my point. You have to start to look at, at what the dynamic is. It's what I do here what, every week. We look at this. It's not hard to see. You're going to have to start to, to work out alternatives. You're being um, subverted at every point within this. And this becomes a troubling problem because of trust. They always talk about the Bitcoin being a trustless. 
Well, the whole system's not trustless. I mean, it's the whole thing's got it's got systems that it works on. But any but trustless, you don't have to worry about the trusting someone. But we're going to have to build somehow build that trust amongst each other to build the private part of this and our continued ability to work through uh, this onslaught of of censorship and these companies that don't want uh, people to come along and, and subvert that. Uh, then Twitter comes up says we recently found a bug that stored passwords unmasked in an internet log. We fixed the bug and have no indication of a breach of misuse by anyone. Let me stop there. They had a bug. This is not a bug. I think this is a this is a mouse click on a on a program uh, configuration uh, for uh, whether or not they were going to do an encrypted plain text log internally. Are you kidding me? No, makes no sense at all. And when they did that, they claim. Twitter does. For those of you who think that you know these are supposed to be the tech company that was the highest aspiring ITs, yeah, no, uh, they claim that no one read their stuff. You going to agree with that? You going to you going to think that that NSA wasn't in on the inside of that? That already knows about this. What did we hear about before? That the Tor browser. They said, oh, we let the other guys know what 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 vel- vulnerabilities were weeks and months before we finally got around to fixing it. So Twitter is online, for those of you that didn't know. They left all these encrypted passcodes all undone. They're claiming that they want you to change your password. I sense that's a trap. Well, that's up to you to decide. I think they're going to re- re- be able to re-log this in a different way somehow. Uh, they may be having to respond to this new awareness about uh, this information since, uh, since uh, Zuckerberg went to talk about faceplant. Uh, this is all coming together at the same time. It's kind of interesting. But so I, I'm not so sure, you know, I think it's going to be a proof. I think I'm sitting on the proof side. My, my Twitter account is just an account. If someone wants to steal it, I wouldn't like it, but uh, they're going to hack it. They're going to hack it. Well, if this, if the Twitter is correct and those those logs weren't taken and they got to to delete them for some reason, which is probably underneath this Zuckerberg thing, uh, then I have nothing to worry about, do I? And if they, my account does get stolen, then Twitter lied, didn't they? So I'm sacrificing an account to prove that Twitter lied, in my view. Maybe you can go another way. But I'm not so sure about this thing. And it wasn't, I don't th- see it as a bug either. But this is what we're told. This is the deception that goes on. That You're walking yourself into this uh, false security. The false uh, need to do to, to do things no different than like the beginning and the, oh we got Iran's uh, doing this wrong no you a bunch of a bunch of fraudulent information you don't even have the right to say what you're saying uh, you are the one that's in fraud of omission of having the same thing you're claiming that they have and they don't even have it and then we got big uncle standing there to want to now we find out he wants to do no I don't, I don't it's not because of this deal not being bad I just want regime change. This is the same guy that said we're going to bring all the troops home, folks. This is the same deception you see everywhere else. But just things you can do about it locally, isn't there? With all this surveillance and all this stuff going on you. What did I say? What did I say that I told you, hinted to the point of, of Austin? you got to go into your local governments. I don't know what else to do here. Those of you that are capable of bringing a concise set of facts, you have to go back into your lo- governments and make those policies that you railed against. Well, that's not law. No, it's law enough for an occupier. Oakland passes groundbreaking municipal law requiring citizen oversight of local surveillance. Is what you can start to do, those of you that complain, I hear all these complaints, I hear no action. This is what you start to do. You start understanding the subject matter and go locally to make the changes that you need that you're complaining about. What's that going to do about Twitter's passwords? Maybe nothing. But they're not going to be able to do the, the overall surveillance that that the you've been hearing going around like for smart cities and all this other stuff there's going to be a, a local oversight but i'll be careful that local oversight ends up becoming thwarted as well so maybe look at that and see if there's a de- better way around it but oakland's going to pass a so-called municipal law corporate law corporate ordinance to require oversight of the surveillance why not for the cops all this stuff can be done folks and we sit there and we cry because we have nothing more to do but cry, be cricket, be cry. To-